Hey, what's up, Leveron here. Today we're gonna be discussing how to capture shiny surfaces in watercolor. And I have this sketch here now, honestly, I don't even know if we're gonna get to all of it because it's unnecessary for the explanation. So let me show you what I mean by that. So one way I like to approach shiny surfaces is to paint them quite like a lot of abstract shapes. So when you see here this, this area of the, the thing that actually pours the water, right? If I go ahead and just indicate there is a bit of a dark area there, right? Like so, with a rounded opening, okay? So we have this little shape here. Now, we have this dark shape here as well. So we can just go ahead and place that in. Almost like you would draw or almost like you would paint with oils or something to that nature. And look at what happens once it goes a little lighter. We can come back and add that lighter shape we see here and kind of blend it. I'm not even treating like I'm not I'm treating this like it has no colors, but you can and in fact it may enhance it. There's a lot of interesting plays of warmth uh, and coolness here. Uh, and then for the let's say all of the bottom areas, I'm just gonna cover it up with this kind of a color and connect it here, right back here. Now, here's what's going to happen. The more you do this for this shape, for this subject matter, the more you'll do this, the more of that realistic impression is going to just pop out of nowhere. You'll be shocked. So you could decide, and this is where a lot of what I talk about when it comes to watercolor freedom comes into play. You don't have to move into a different area. You can decide to focus on this area as much as you want until you get it just right. So for example, I recognize there's a thin strip of slightly darker paint around the bottom. Why not include that as well? Right now, at some point you may want to let this dry, but let's go back and reinforce some of the darks we put earlier around the base here, right? And in fact, we can use this opportunity while this still dries to start adding more dark. So we have this thing that connects here, the handle that I didn't, didn't even include most of it here, but it does have a, most of it just goes outside the frame, but it does have this dark shadow right next to it. So let's place that shadow in. Watercolor should be, I hear you through the screen. Not, not, I mean, not you, I hear people through the screen. I don't know who they are, but quite a lot of people believe that watercolor should be painted light to dark. What am I, what's my business here painting all of these darks? Well, the real answer is it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you paint watercolor from light to dark, from dark to light, it doesn't matter. It's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It is what it is. You can decide to paint it however you want, right? And you can decide to start with uh, darks, you can decide to start with lights, you can decide to uh, go ahead and do a very hybrid approach of using both. For example, right now I'm feeling like filling up all of this area, so I will. I'll fill that area up with quite light paint to get rid of some paper white. And then as I get to this beautiful highlight, I'm gonna, gonna pause, I'm gonna wrap <laughs> around it with this barking. I don't know why, there is a delivery coming, but I don't think it should arrive by now. Um, and I'm gonna place some clean water here on the other side of that highlight, and then come back and have a smooth edge here. And that will get you kind of this right side handle. And now we can just let it sit and take a look. So this thing up top here, that I don't know what you'd call this, the thing you grab onto when you wanna pick up the top. So you can just go ahead and paint the whole thing dark. It is quite strong. This is a highlight. It's not as light as I'm, it's paper, but I'm going to keep it like that for now. I'm going to come back to it later. And then look at this weird pattern we have. So there is this reflection and then there's this break and then the reflection comes back. See this? And then here it's dark, but there on the left, I'm actually going to go a little warm here. Why not? It goes like this. 
goes a little lighter and breaks off the pattern. Now things still aren't making full sense. Why is that? If you've been listening to my videos, because we still don't have the full context. So to get the full context, we need to continue moving on. Let's add some color here. So this is quite a warm color. So a bit more of the red. And we can go ahead and pretty much cover this whole thing up. All the way to this connection. Same on the other side. Until we get to this beautiful reflection that, again, is just an abstract shape. Let's leave room for those highlights to be used in a second. Something like that. This is a highlight that I'm leaving. I'm just following some abstract shapes I'm seeing. And again, what did I tell you? The more you do this, the more details you add, the more sense it'll start making. It's okay if it still doesn't make sense, but it will start making sense the more you do this. So let's start adding some more details. So we have this beautiful uh, dark reflection for that dark thing you grab. So I'm going to put some cool color here and I'm going to blend the right edge. While the shape is wet, I can do everything. I can, you know, smoothen out the edges, lift, charge, do whatever I want. Something like so. And then as we get to, and I had to pick up a delivery and I still have time to work on it. So you see how that works? You add this shape here to the left. I literally had to walk away from the painting for a good, I don't know, 10 seconds. Still okay. And then we have this bit of warmth, I suppose. Now you can work more organized than me. You can go ahead and be more organized. But what you will learn is that just like a lot of other things, it simply doesn't matter. That's the thing. You can do whatever you want, really. At the end of the day, it won't matter. What does matter though? What matters is your complete freedom and passion and engagement with the process as you're painting. That's the only thing that will matter. And what I mean by matter is that's the thing that will lead to a masterful piece of art. A piece of art that others see and react to. They have no choice but to react to because that's what it evokes in them. So the more I do this, the more of these little details I add, the more it's going to connect. Do you want to continue? Shall we continue? See this one through? Let's see this one through. So I'm going to add this hint of a darker. Goes through here. There's a hair here. Let me get that out. We're going to, I'm going to use my Bob Ross voice and kind of go and paint very gently and let the details show up very carefully. But it's okay if things don't go exactly your way. It's okay if you're inaccurate here and there. There's nothing wrong with that. No one will notice it, in fact. So it's all going to work out really well for you. Because when you allow yourself to paint things that you love and to do so with freedom, you really cannot make any mistakes. And that's the main thing here. There is no mistakes. Quite literally, it's not possible to make one. Because you're enjoying what you're doing. You're putting your heart and soul into it. You're putting energy into it, right? And the more you do that, the better things are going to look and the more they'll feel connected. So I'm going to do something fun here. I'm going to start painting rid of this warm, dark section up top. So I'm going to show you in a second. I'm going to go ahead and fill in this area right here. And look at what I'm going to do next. I'm going to wrap it, wrap around it with still a bit warm, but a bit more black. color right underneath it to create that abstract pattern 
and we're going to feed into this abstract pattern here to the right. And the more we do this without you even noticing, things will start making sense. You won't be able to know always what you're looking at, but it will feel right. It will feel like something that makes sense. Even if you're all sloppy in your technique and you're just a beginner, you don't know what you're doing. Now you are limited to one thing and that is your ability to notice things, right? So I notice this goes a little dark and then there's a gap and then it goes a little dark again, but ultimately it goes back to being light. These are small details that in the past I would have never noticed. And if you can't notice them, you probably won't be able to portray them. There's nothing wrong with that, right? The more you do this, the more your uh, visual senses improve, the more you notice these things, the easier it's going to be. And I mean much, much easier it's going to be to notice all of them. So let's put the shadow down here. And let's also darken this bottom bit here just a bit and come back with some water to smoothen that out. I do see a bit of a detail here, so let's just do this thin line. Goes like this. Let's add that division here between the cover and the actual container or bottom part, however you want to call it. And let's increase the value on the right. Let's close in on those highlights like so. Give them more meaning. Something like that. A lot of my hair <laughs> in my palette. It's funny. Uh, and reblend that edge. Let's switch to a bit of a larger brush. Keep that warmth. This entire thing feels like it could be a little bit darker, but very gently. This is the third time we're going over it. It's going to be fine. You don't have to worry about it. Now notice what happens around the center here. We have a darker, cooler color here that kind of goes like that, defining that edge. Then it goes quite light, by the way, you'll notice, and it reflects some windows. Like so. Do you know what you're looking at? Can you tell and know what it is? Not really. But does it start to make sense? In fact, I think that is my reflection here that I'm painting right now as we speak. I think that's my reflection. And it all gets squeezed up. Now that I know it's my reflection, I can use a bit of warmth where my face is just to make it make a little more sense. And I do see these little shapes here. This goes darker. This is a reflection of all the closets and counters and shelves. See, there's spices here. I know because I live there. <laughs> I know what this is. And then we have a bit of a shadow here. And even though my proportions are inaccurate, they're actually quite wrong. Things aren't placed where they should be placed it still starts to make sense, right? You can see it starting to make sense as a reflective object. And I'm going to stop soon because I feel like this starts to create the impression I was after. But what I will leave you with is again that idea of the next time you want to paint a shiny object like this one, it's not really about worrying about the whole thing, what it looks like before you even get started. It's more about noticing, noticing as many details as you can and slowly but surely incorporating them into your painting. Now, if you see the possibility of getting those accurate, if you see that the, the possibility to do it, you have a chance of capturing it. If you lose faith in the middle of the process, you won't be able to make it. And um, this is not me trying to motivate you to have faith and believe in the process. But it's just uh, a plain fact that 
when you are unable to see it, to see the future impression, you just won't get the result you're after. And that is fine. That is fine. With time, with observation, with some practice, you will be able to do that. Now I'm going to wrap it up by adding a bit of this warm-ish shadow and leave that highlight I see here. See that? It's a really nice highlight. And in fact, none of this is paper white, but I think I will stop it here. I want to have this very isolated view uh, of this beautiful, shiny, chromatic, whatever you want to call it, object. I absolutely like this look. I absolutely enjoy painting it this way. And you see, even though it looked like there was no hope in the beginning, there was. And here we are with a beautiful, shiny result from far. This looks almost realistic, probably realistic. Not photorealistic, but it does look realistic. Um, and I really hope that was useful. If you want to learn how to let go, enjoy the painting process, get the result you want, be sure to check out my frustration-free watercolor course. I will put a link below. So you'll be able to check that out. It's going to show you exactly how to let go, enjoy the painting process, be in it, be a part of it, and get out of the way and let the water and paint do their own thing so that you can basically harness their power and have them do your bidding for you and producing a beautiful, beautiful result. Whatever the result you're interested in, how much abstraction you are interested in or how much uh, um, realism you're interested in, you'll be able to get that. So check that out. If you want more information on how to paint realistically, something a little more akin to this, I would say, check out the watercolor realism course. I'm going to show you the power of values, edges, shapes to nail that realistic impression every single time. Lastly, I want to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. You allow me to do this, make a living off my art and off of teaching my art and have complete confidence that I'll be able to do so for the foreseeable future, if not for my entire career. Thank you so, so much. We'll see you in the next vid. Take care.